good to see you again in a couple years. I look forward to coming up here, preaching the gospel. I can't think of a greater thing to be doing right now than to open the Word of God, read it as we have already. That's the reason I asked Clay to read the whole chapter. We cannot, cannot make too much of the Word of God. It's just not possible. Saturate yourself in the Word of God. And I thank you, thank you for the invite. God has blessed you with a faithful pastor. I listen to Clay on Sermon Audio often. It's a real blessing listening to Clay and Darvin and other men. What a blessing it is to have men like this to be able to listen to just at the click of a button. Think about that. At the click of a button, you can hear the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. My, how blessed we are. And I thank you ladies for the food and preparations you have made. Turn to Colossians chapter 1. I'm going to use two, three, four verses in this chapter. I titled the message, The Preeminence of Jesus Christ. The Preeminence of the Lord Jesus Christ. When I think of His preeminence, it gives me great comfort. In this day and time we live, are you not glad that he rules and overrules all things? You know, I think more and more as I get older of that scripture over in the Psalms that the, the, the earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, and they who dwell therein. It's all his. It, it's all in his hands. It's not a loose cannon out here going. The Lord has control of it. Absolute control. And that gives me great comfort to know that. You know, it says in verse 19 that it pleased the Father. And that ought to get our attention. That word ought to get our attention. It pleased the Father. We ought to get up on the edge of the seat and find out what it pleased the Father. What did it please Him to do? It says here, it pleased the Father that in Him, that is in Jesus Christ, His Son should all fullness dwell. That being so, all fullness dwells in the Lord Jesus Christ. The whole fullness of the Godhead dwells in, in Him. That's why Paul could write, and in Him you are complete because of His fullness. Because of his fullness. The whole Bible is about the fullness of Jesus Christ. There's absolutely nothing lacking in the Lord Jesus Christ. Everything you and I need to stand before God, we have. It is provided in Jesus Christ. What a blessing. What a blessing. Now, this word preeminence. It means this. It means the state of being preeminent, extremely distinguished. It means extremely distinguished. It means this, outstanding or superior to all others. The Lord Jesus Christ is extremely distinguished. This is my beloved son. God never spoke from heaven and said that about anybody else. This is my beloved son, in whom I'm well pleased. Hear him. Listen to him. Hear him. There's none to be compared to the Lord Jesus Christ. None to be, can, can be compared to him. There's none like him. He's superior to all others. We can say, to the Lord Jesus Christ, your preeminence. It's like saying your majesty, your preeminence. He's high above all. 
He is high above all. Now, first of all, if we are going to talk about the preeminence of the Lord Jesus Christ, we have to start with his person. Because if he's not who he is, as the word of God says that he is and reveals that he is, we don't need to go any further. We need to stop. But listen to this. In verse 15, who that is Christ is the image of the invisible God. He is the, the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. There's no one like him in person. No one like him in person. Jesus Christ is truly God manifest in the flesh. If you want to study God, study Jesus Christ. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. I'm the lesson. He's the lesson. If we are ever to learn anything of God, we will learn it through Jesus Christ. There is no knowing God. It is impossible to know God apart from Jesus Christ. No man knows the Father save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. It's impossible to know God and not know Jesus Christ. It's impossible. It says there in verse 17, and he is before all things. Now how can that be so? How can it be so that this man, Jesus Christ, this Jesus of Nazareth, how can it be so that he is before all things? Because he's God. Because he's God. That's, that's why. He has no beginning of days, nor end of life. He is the ancient of days. That's who Jesus Christ is. He is the ancient of days. He's the one that said, he's the one that said, let there be light. And there was light. He's the one who said that. He's the one that commanded light. He's the one that commanded life. The Lord Jesus Christ did. Our Lord said in John 14, He that has seen me has seen the Father. I believe it's Philip says, Show us the Father. He said, You're looking at him. You're looking at him. He that has seen me has seen the Father. We have to start here with the person of the Lord Jesus Christ because who he is makes what he did effectual. If he's not God, then he's an imposter because he claims to be God, the Son of God, equal with the Father. He is God manifest in the flesh. And if he's not God, then you and I are yet in our sins because only, listen, only God can satisfy his own law. There's no other creature that can satisfy God's law but God. Only God, can do, only God can satisfy God. Listen to these scriptures. In Matthew 1, 23. Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. God with us in the flesh. God walking among us. God in the flesh walked on this earth. God did that. Listen to Hebrews in chapter 1, verse 2 and 3. That God, he's speaking here of God the Father, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. That's who Jesus Christ is. He's the express image of God. He is God in the flesh. And listen, our Redeemer is none other than God himself. That's why he can't fail. The reason he can't fail is because he's God. It's because of who he is. Listen to what Paul says in Acts 20, 28. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to the, all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which he purchased with his own blood. Which God purchased with his own blood. Our Redeemer is none other than God. 
And that being so, we are redeemed. If now, if Jesus Christ died for me, if He shed His blood for me, He has redeemed me, He has purchased me, I am His, He cannot fail, because the blood He redeemed me with, Paul said, is the blood of God. It's the blood of God. The God-man. That's who He is. The God-man. And then we see his preeminence in this chapter in creation. It says in verse 16, For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions, principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. He created it all. That one that they, they said, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? <laughs> that one they said was a blasphemer? That one they said was a, was a wine-bibber? A gluttonous man? That's our creator. That's our, he's our creator. That one is our creator. Everything we see was created by Jesus Christ. And everything we can't see. <laughs> we can't see the angels. There's a, there, there is a world that you and I cannot see with these physical eyes. He created that world. He created it. Turn over to John chapter 1. The gospel of John chapter 1. It says, In the beginning was the word... And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. Nothing evolved. Nothing evolved. All things were made by Him. And without Him was not anything made that was made. The Father never works independently of the Son, and the Son never works independently of the Father. All things were made by Him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. All things were created by him. He is, listen, he has preeminence in creation. In creation. It was all created by him. And then we see in this chapter, he has preeminence in power. In power. He has supremacy over all. Look in verse, back in verse 16. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible. The things I said you can see and the things you cannot see. He created them. Whether they be thrones, or dominions, or principalities, or powers. All things were created by him, and, listen, for him. You know the reason you and I exist? We exist for Jesus Christ and no other reason. And the sooner you and I learn that, <laughs> the happier we will be. That we exist for no other reason than the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the only reason I exist. I do not exist for myself. God didn't create me for me and to go off on my own and do my own thing. I was created by Christ and for Christ, for His glory. All power, listen, He has all power, He has supremacy over all thrones. Don't, don't get overly excited when you see these different rulers or dictators and don't get overly excited that they're going to do something that's you know out of control or they're under the control of Jesus Christ every one of them there's not a there's not a power on this earth that that is not under the the authority listen the authority of Jesus Christ he said in John 17 father you give me power over all flesh 
There's not a human being on this earth that he does not have power over. That's why he has no trouble saving a sinner if he's going to save a sinner. I'm not a, I'm not a tough case for him. If he's purposed to save me, he can crack me real quick. He can break my heart real easy. He can lay me in the dust real easy. I was driving uh, from North Carolina going back home. This has been some time ago, months ago. And as I was driving, I was close to this tractor trailer. It looks like we were getting ready to come together. And, you know, and I thought, how easy it is to die. I thought, how many ways I can be, my life can be taken out of here if if the Lord allowed it. If He allowed it. But until that day comes that He has purposed for me to die and the way for me to die is purposed. It's not going to just be, you know, whatever. He has purposed my time coming into this world, my duration in this world, and the day I would die to leave this world and the way I'm going to leave this world. That's all under His control. And everything that will come my way in my life if he said not a hair of your head will perish and he knows all the numbers of the hair on my head, that's how intimately he knows me and he controls absolutely everything. I mean right down to the fly buzzing in my face. He knows it. He controls it. You know, I want to live in the reality of that. I want people I preach to to live in the reality of the power and the glory and in the lordship of Jesus Christ. I mean, how you know people that don't know Christ? This is how I. This is one of the reasons you know that men and women by nature are dead. Because what I know now, I look back and I think, how do you keep from going crazy? If when you don't have Christ, when you don't have a solid foundation. To stand on. How do you not lose your mind? Well, the only way you can not lose your mind is you don't have one. <laughs> That's the only way you can not lose it. You're dead in trespasses and sins. And when you're dead, you're spiritually dead, you don't, you don't really realize what's going on. You're like, that, you're like that demonic man when the Lord cast the devils out, he was in his right, what does it say? He was in his right mind. That's when a person is really in the right mind is when God saves them. And they believe God. To call God a liar, not to believe God. Now listen, not to believe God is to call God a liar and that's not being in the right mind. You've got to be out of your mind to do that. To call God a liar to his face? Our Lord, listen, our Lord has power over all thrones, all dominions, all principalities. Satan is not out here running around at his will. Satan is not running around at his will. He's running around at God's will. You know, he answers to God. You know, when he came before God uh, to, concerning Job, and uh, he, God said, I'm going to paraphrase, he said, where you, where you been? He said, I've been running up and down to and fro in the earth. Well, God's not asking for information. But what he is doing, he's making Satan answer to his authority. Satan is under the authority of Jesus Christ. He can't, he can't move a hair, he can't move a muscle towards you without the permission of Jesus Christ. He couldn't touch Job. He said to, he said to God, he said, you put a hedge about him. I can't touch him. Remove that hedge and, I, and I'll show you what, he, what Job thinks of you. He'll curse you to your face. He had to get permission just to touch him. He's under the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. Turn over to 1 Corinthians 15. First Corinthians chapter 15. Look at verse 23. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterward they that are Christ at his coming. Then cometh the end, when he 
shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. Now listen. I know sometimes you turn the television on and you say, what is going on? You look at the news. Don't look at it anymore than you have to. But you look at the news. You think, what is going on? Right here is what's going on. Listen. When he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power, that's exactly what's going on right now. Jesus Christ is putting down all rule and all authority and all power. And in a little while, we will see it. We will see it. For he must reign. When? Right now. <laughs> He's not going to reign. He's reigning now. This, I have learned to quit looking horizontal and look up. Because that's where the earth, that's where everything's being ran from is the throne of heaven where Christ sits at God's right hand. He must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. I remember walking away from the grave of a, of a, of a believer, a friend that Henry and I knew where, uh, very well. And, and as he and I were, were walking away from it, Henry looked at me and he said, I'll be glad when we quit dying. We won't do these funerals no more. Well, the last one he's going to put away is death and we'll die no more. Can you imagine that? I, you know, right now, I know, when, I know there's one thing out there in front of me and there's one thing I know is out there in front of you. It's appointed unto men wants to die. Now, that's coming. Unless the Lord comes right now and puts an end to all this, that's coming down the road. When? Only God knows, and I'm glad only he knows. I don't. But the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death, for he hath put all things under his feet. God the Father has put all things under the feet of Jesus Christ. Because it says here, but when he saith all things put under him, it's manifest that he is, not, he, that he is accepted. The Father's not put under him. That's what he's saying. Which he's not under him, which did put all things under him. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. That's what's going on right now. The Lord Jesus Christ is subduing all things to himself. Look over in, uh, back here in Colossians, right over in uh, Philippians chapter 3, verse 20 and 21. For our conversation, our citizenship, our life is in heaven. This is what I realize. I don't live, I live here on this earth, okay? I, you live here, I live here. But our citizenship, it's really in heaven. It's in heaven. We live in the kingdom of God. That's the one I'm concerned about. The kingdom of men, God's going to destroy God's going to destroy the kingdom of this world. We live in the kingdom of God. Our conversation is in heaven, for whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he's able even to subdue all things unto himself. He's able to subdue all things. There's not one thing that exists that's not under the authority of Jesus Christ. Now listen. And it says also there in, in the Colossians, and by him, uh, and by him all things consist or maintained, held together. I'm not worried about this, this earth. and I'm not worried about anything falling apart. I'm not, he's maintaining it. And when you and I are gone, he'll still be maintaining it. If, it's, if it stays here another thousand years, he will still maintain it. It's his. It's his. And then we have the preeminence of the Lord Jesus Christ in the church. It says in verse 18, And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things, not some things. In all things, he might have the preeminence. 
He is the representative head of the church. He's the head, we are the body. I'm glad that it's so. I'm glad, I'm glad to be a part of the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's very real to me. Spiritually, I am a part of the body of Christ. And that's a body that's not going to die. It says he's going to change our vile body. This vile body you're looking at, that's why the scripture speaks of this body. You know, we get in the mirror, we dress it up, you know, we do all kinds of stuff trying to make it look good. Especially as we get older. We have to really work on it. But the scripture says it's a vile body. It's just a vile, it's, it's decaying. You know what, you're, I was here two years ago. My hairs are getting a little grayer. You know what you're seeing? You're seeing decay. You, I am decaying right in, right in front of my mirror at the house. I'm decaying. But that body, that body of the Lord Jesus Christ, it's not decaying. Hell no, no, no. It's forever young. It's forever young. And what a beautiful body he has. You know, you go over in the Song of Solomon's, and whenever he describes her, he describes a beautiful body. Now, I know on, on this end of it, in this life, we see the sin, and we experience the sin. But now, in Christ, the church is beautiful. She's, she's without spot or blemish. You know, God, when God created Eve, He created Eve out of Adam. And right now, God Almighty is creating the church, the bride of the Lord Jesus Christ, out of Christ. And when God brought Eve to Adam, He brought Eve to Adam, and she was spotless. She was righteous. Now how much more the church? How much more the church which he purchased with his own blood and he's created in righteousness and true holiness. How much more his body? He's a representative head of the church. The church began with him. No one's, listen, no one's above him or equal to him in the church. There's no one equal to him in the church. He's the head. He's the head of the house. He's the husband. He's the head of the house. And the body is always subject to, to the head. If you take this head off of this body, it is useless. It's going to just drop. The only reason I'm doing this right now, you see me moving my hands, I'm thinking, I'm, because of my head. My head is, is uh, telling my body what to do. We take our leadership from the Lord Jesus Christ. That's where we take our leadership from. And nothing supersedes and no one supersedes and no, no law supersedes the law of God and the leadership of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the one we go to. He's the one we follow. And then he's our economical head in that he provides for us. Who's providing for us? You know, I tell my wife, you know, if the Lord takes me before he does her, you know, he'll provide. He's providing for her now through me. He provides. Who provides for you, really? Who provides? Who give you your job? Who give you the intelligence to do your job? Who give you the health to get up in the morning and go do your job? Our Lord. Who gives you the breath that you're taking right now? Our Lord. Every breath we take, He gives it to us. Every breath. And He provides us our daily need. He, de he provides us our physical needs. He provides us our spiritual needs. As Pharaoh said to, uh, to all those who came to him during that drought, he said, go to Joseph. And that's what the Father says. He says to every sinner in need of mercy, go to Christ. Because there's where I can show mercy. There's where God can be a just God and a Savior. Is in His Son, Jesus Christ. No place else. No place else. That's the only place where your sins can be put away. You can cry your heart out. You can cry day and night 
and, and your tears and will not put away one sin. Only the blood puts away the sin. Only the blood. Only the blood. And we go to Him for all our needs. And then He has the preeminence in the believer. With the believer. He has preeminence. Jesus Christ is not a part of my life. Jesus Christ is my life. If not, I don't have it. I don't have it. He is my life. It says in verse 11 in chapter 3 of Colossians, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. He has the preeminence. <laughs> in our affections, He's first. He that loves mother, father, sister, brother more than me, he's not worthy of me. In our thoughts, he's first. We are to bring every thought into subjection to the Lord Jesus Christ. In our thoughts, he's altogether lovely. There's no one who, who supersedes Christ in our thoughts. No one. In worship, he's first. That's why we're here. That is why we are here. If we are not here to worship Jesus Christ, we don't need to be here. We don't need to be here. There's no one like the Lord Jesus Christ. In sonship, there's none like Him. He's the only begotten. In election, He's the first elect. You want to talk about election? Start with Jesus Christ. Not start with the doctrine of election. Start with the person of election. Behold mine elect, God said in Isaiah 42. Mine elect in whom my soul delights. He shall not fail. God chose him, then chose us in him. So if we start with election, we start with the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the covenant of grace, if we want to talk about the covenant of grace, he is the covenant. He said in Isaiah 42, I will give thee as a covenant to the people. He is the covenant of grace. In redemption, he's the one who wrought it. He's the one who bought it. He worked it out, and he's, it's his blood that by which we are redeemed. We are not redeemed with silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Christ. In life, he has life in himself. He said, no man takes my life from me. I lay it down of myself, and I take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father." He's the giver of life. Because I live, you shall live also. That's the reason I live spiritually. He has commanded life. He has given me life. And that's why I have life. I don't have life because I ask for it. The very fact that I ask for forgiveness is proof I have life. But I've never asked for it. In death, he conquered death, hell, and the grave. He took the sting out of death. I saw a person die one time that was screaming on the way out. It was the most horrible thing I ever had to witness. Begging me to pray for her. He's taking that sting out of our death. We don't have to fear death. We can welcome it. We can, it's just like death to the believer is like going through that door. You're leaving this world and you're going into the paradise. And that's the truth. That's not some mythology. That's the truth. Death, he says, where's thy sting? Grave, where's your victory? The Lord Jesus Christ took the sting out of death and the victory away from the grave. In the resurrection, Christ said, I am the resurrection and the life. Martha said, I know my brother will rise in the resurrection. She was looking for the event. She believed that. And there will be in a resurrection. But I tell you this, Christ said, I am the resurrection. The resurrection is a person. I'm risen, listen, I'm risen in Christ first before I ever come out of that grave. I'm risen in Him. When He arose, I rose. When He arose, the whole church rose in Him. Because the whole church was in Him. 
I am the resurrection. He's the first and the last. It begins with him and it will end with him. There's seven billion people on this earth. I mean, it's hard to say how many there have been since the beginning. Every last one of them will have to deal with Jesus Christ. Every last one of them. We don't have to deal with a lot of There's a lot of people out there we'll never know, never deal with. But everyone's going to deal with him. Everyone. And this being so, this being so, there in verse 1, or, verse, or chapter 3, verse 1, set your affection on things above. Set your heart on him. Seek after him. Don't get caught up into this life and this world. Seek those things which are above where he sits at God's right hand. Our life, our citizenship is above. It's not here. We are truly pilgrims. We're just, we're just passing through. That's all I'm doing. I'm just, I'm just passing through. My home and my life is in glory. It's in the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, I hope that's a blessing to you. I hope that's a blessing.